with this understanding of how the offset um, of zeta naught uh, or of that circular cylinder in the zeta plane affects the airflow, we can now consider uh, what happens when that offset is much smaller than the radius of the circle. In other words, when uh, when c naught and uh, eta naught are much smaller than r. Okay, and um, and so basically what that gives us uh, for C naught is the solution for thin airfoils. And uh, for eta naught being small, that, uh, that, that means that we have small camber. Okay, now we're not always gonna make both of these assumptions, but you can do some things by looking at these as they basically approach zero uh, or, or are extremely small compared to R. So one thing we can do is look at the geometry, and I'm not gonna work through the mathematics of this, but you can uh, get an analytic solution for the, for the geometry of, uh, of the airfoil and, uh, and actually find the location of maximum thickness by uh, making some assumptions. And, uh, and uh, so what we get there is that that maximum thickness is related to uh, C naught. Um, and so we can come up with an equation that looks like this, where the thickness of this airfoil is really closely uh, approximated, and that's first defined as T max over ZT minus ZL. So uh, the maximum thickness divided by the aerodynamic cord length. Uh, and that's really closely approximated by using some, uh, some approximations and assumptions. Uh, it's going to be close to uh, minus three squared to three over four times uh, C naught over R. So the, the X offset of that circular cylinder divided by R. Okay, so this is, uh, this is, how the, this is an, an approximation for the thickness uh, as a function of C naught of a Joukowsky airfoil. Now we can also look at the lift coefficient over here. And this one we'll walk through in a little bit more detail. Uh, so let's look at the um, the lift coefficient uh, uh, for the case that um, uh, where we have small camber and and actually what we're doing um, here is we're going to assume uh, we're, we're going to look at these terms right here. So we've got this r squared minus a to naught squared, r squared minus a to naught squared. So what happens here is that r already is much larger than a to naught. And when we square the two of these, the difference between the two becomes even greater. So by simply neglecting this a to naught squared, um, in fact, let's just walk through that. So if we just neglect that a to naught squared compared to r, uh, this, then we get the square root of r here and the square root of r right there. Um, or excuse me, square root of r squared, so that those just both become r's, and uh, and that r can actually move out uh, in front. So um, I'm not going to work through all the algebra here, but basically um, you can rewrite this, and this is the section lift, by the way. Um, the section lift will be uh, 2 pi times 1 minus uh, c naught over r times sine of alpha plus eta naught over r times the cosine of alpha. Okay, and all we've done here is neglected eta naught squared compared to r squared. So we actually haven't totally neglected, um, uh, uh, we haven't totally neglected camber and, and we haven't neglected thickness at all, um, but uh, but all we've done is dropped that second order term for, from the camber. Okay, we've kept the first order term here. Okay, so um, now it's convenient to to define a design lift coefficient for, for a Joukowsky airfoil. So that design lift coefficient is uh, the, the lift coefficient of the airfoil at, um, at an angle of attack of zero. So if we say that this this airfoil has zero degrees angle of attack. It, uh, with some camber, it will give us some lift coefficient. And so um, we can now relate or, or get an estimate for what the camber uh, or, or what uh, eta naught and C naught need to be 
based off of a desired lift coefficient at zero degrees angle of attack. So if we just plug in alpha equals zero um, into this lift coefficient equation, uh, what we'll get is two pi one minus uh, C naught over R uh, times eta naught over R. Okay, so this is our design lift coefficient. All right. So with these two um, with these two equations here that tell us the thickness and the design lift coefficient or how those are, re are related to C naught and eta naught, instead of defining a Joukowsky airfoil by specifying a, a C naught or an eta naught, we can now specify this airfoil by a design uh, thickness. So we can give it a, a thickness and a design lift coefficient. And, uh, and then back out what C naught and A to naught need to be. So from these two equations, uh, it's pretty simple to back out. This first one uh, is only related to C naught, and so we can just solve for that. So we're going to get that C naught uh, for some given thickness, uh, and actually let's do this C naught over R, is equal to uh, minus 4 tau over 3 squared to 3. Okay, so that's how we would set our C naught value based off of some estimate for thickness. And by, by setting C naught uh, to that value, we're, we're not actually going to get an airfoil with exactly this thickness. Remember, some approximations went into this relationship. Uh, and so we're not going to get exactly that thick of an airfoil, but it will get us really close to, to the thickness that we're looking for. Uh, and then uh, we can solve uh, for eta naught over R from this equation over here and plug in our value for uh, C naught over R that's, that's a function of, of uh, our desired thickness. Okay, so by doing that, uh, what we get for A to naught over R is uh, that it is the design lift coefficient divided by two pi, one plus four tau uh, over three squared, so three. Okay, so that is our relationship for a to naught over r. Okay, so um, uh, so uh, so this gives us a good starting point for for c naught and a to naught. Uh, instead of defining those values, we'd we'd prefer to define this in terms of a thickness and a lift coefficient, a design lift coefficient. Uh, and so we can use that as inputs to a code that then would give us the geometry of this Joukowsky airfoil that's going to return something that performs very closely, uh, you know, gives us something very close to this design lift coefficient and, and something very close to this thickness. Although there were a few approximations that went into this, um, so they're not going to be exact, but, but they're a very good starting point uh, for, for uh, analysis of Joukowsky airfoils.